The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer to peer. All right, bro. All right. How'd that coffee work at? Yeah, feeling feeling good. Price <laughs> report take two. All right. What's going on? You had, say, you had a rough night or you're just uh No, no. Okay. Just just slept in a little bit. I mean, I'm minus two hours to you guys, so uh, you know. Yeah, no, that's that's on true. a Saturday morning sometimes can be a little bit problematic, but no big for deal. Sure. Thanks to D Goon for getting on and uh being Johnny on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah jump in jump in man i mean uh i haven't been following price at all really what, what what's going on it seems like things are just kind of stagnating right yeah i mean that's definitely um well for crypto at least stocks have been going up like if we take a look at the nasdaq i mean you can see the nasdaq just totally broke out one thing i've been seeing floating around twitter is that um apparently this is a minority of stocks this is something like I don't know. I want to say it's like 20% of stocks are responsible for this movement and the rest of everything else is either flat or down. So it's all um, the AI stuff. Yeah, probably. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it, it's all, it's all the AI bots trading and also the AI companies, yeah. probably the AI bots trading the AI companies to make sure they go up. <laughs> it, we're, we're already, we're already in the Terminator revolution. We don't Shit, there it is. There's the first <laughs> candle of the Terminator uh, movement. <laughs> We're all going to be the poor plebs, and the AI is going to have all the money. They'll become the next Illuminati. Keep us around for their slave labor. <laughs> as long as they use mining. Monero, we, we'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. <laughs> have us mine their rare earth metals. And <laughs> so, um, yeah, in a lot of ways, uh, I've kind of been telling my friends, like, you know, they got me good here because the mark, like I've been saying for the past month, like, yeah, the crypto's kind of down, but macro seems stable. Things still seem like they're on their way up. Um, but then we've got like, uh, you know, we've got Bitcoin, for example, versus the NASDAQ. And you can see it's just lost almost 20 percent of its value since um, uh, since right around mid-April. Um, so, um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the macro. Let's see what's going on there. First of all, we'll start with the dollar index. We talked about this for um, really for this most of this period here that we were forming um, bullish positive divergence on the dollar index, which would be an indication that we were going to come up. To the top side eventually and um sure enough you know i was kind of hoping we'd get down here that never really happened at some point right here i think it was a couple weeks ago i said yeah i'm not confident that we'll actually make it this far anymore and interestingly enough the stock market has continued rising at least the nasdaq specifically has continued rising the s p is kind of lagging behind we'll get to there in a minute um in terms of a little bit um shorter time frame my guess is that this move could potentially be running out of steam here for the dixie but that's not that's not necessarily to say that it's completely done, but it is finally hitting some resistance spots. So we've got uh, this line right there and it, it's a little bit of a dubious line because, you know, OK, I've, I've connected these two top points. But, you know, what about what about that guy right there? We could hypothetically try and find ways to draw this a little bit more shallow if we really wanted to. Um, but at a minimum, uh, it, it does seem like it's it, it's probably a relevant line to draw. There's probably some resistance, especially when we combine it with this line right here. So we're kind of looking at something that, that could be getting close to running out of steam. We'll come down to the four hour time frame and um, you can kind of see that there might be a case to be made that we're starting to make a little bit of, um, oops, what did I just do there? Uh, that, we, that we might make a, a little bit of um, uh, bearish price divergence. It's, it's not anything that I would say is completely, um, you know, in the bag here, but it, it could be the beginning of a little bit of a turnaround here from Dixie after really, Pretty much since we got off the horn last time, two weeks ago, uh, it has just been uh, on a tear here. So, um, yeah, I mean, but that's still like, it, it's still nothing too too crazy. Like, it's it's not a move that that really inspires fear necessarily. Um, but but it is kind of, it's almost 5%. It's a 4% move right there. Um, okay, we've got yields. So, yields seem to have returned to some bit of normality. So, um, when yields are going up, usually that's because... Um, their values are going down and their values are going down because people are moving out of bonds and into the stock market. Typically, that's how that happens. So, um, yeah, we've we've seen the stock market rise or the Nasdaq rise um, be accompanied by the 10 year yield moving up. It's still kind of in this larger structure here. Um, so obviously we broke out of this broadening, rising, broadening structure. <clears throat> we're, we're somewhat in a bit of a uh, a little bit of a wedge here on the way down now. Um, I think this is probably likely to remain stable overall 
the Fed might raise rates one more time, but apparently the market is betting on them actually lowering rates this year. Um, we'll have to wait and see if that happens. I don't see massive, massive systemic risk here in the markets, um, but I do see a growing just like normal risk, right? Kind of like a, a downturn risk. Um, I'm not I'm not confident the Nasdaq is going to keep doing what it's been doing. I think it's got some more room to go, but you know, we're getting close to some important levels. Uh, we've got the repurchase agreements here. And um, oh, you know, I guess I'm kind of showing you guys something that uh, I'll just erase that for now. There we go. OK, so um, that's that's some of the stuff I want to show you guys later. Uh, like I think maybe in a few weeks here, I can start showing you guys that. At, at any rate, um, basically, we've got standard deviations here at the top that are kind of um, sort of limiting this. We've also got just our regular club lines here. This looks like something that, you know, might want to break to the top side, but it's had kind of one, two, three chances to do it, and it's not doing it. So that's that's not entirely too surprising, though, because fundamentally speaking, the Fed is probably about done raising rates. They're probably very close to it. Maybe they've got another quarter uh, quarter point, uh, quarter percentage to raise. Um, but at any rate, um, yeah, we'll just have to see how this plays out. Even if we do break this, it wouldn't surprise me just to continue going sideways. And I guess that would be fine. That would kind of spell more let's just call it mud for um, for crypto markets probably or for markets in general. But at any rate, that looks stable. Uh, let's see, gold. Gold is also hitting some important support. So we kind of peaked out here, you know, it's like a big spot overall. There's like a lifetime resistance there to gold. And um, hopefully this line down here at the bottom can, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, can, uh, can remain relevant right hopefully that can hold we can come back to the top side on on a much larger time frame i mean gold just looks um gold just looks like it's it's strong it looks fine like i don't i mean it's you know the the illuminati or whoever like you know they don't they don't really want you in gold so i, I feel like they everyone kind of i mean they've shown overall like uh that that they try and suppress the gold price i don't think it's necessarily just like only paper gold and it's not just like you know, I mean, people kind of like, oh, my God, the gold depression, it's all controlled. You know, I'm, I'm not really of that opinion necessarily, but they do what they can. Right. They do what they can to make sure that um, it, it stays down. It stays out of the spotlight as much as they can. So anyways, um, yeah, I mean, we still got this upward channel. It's uh, it's really a narrowing kind of channel. Right. It's, it's a bit of a rising wedge. Um, if we had some like major systemic event, you could probably expect gold to actually break down to the bottom of this area again. But overall, I mean, we've got a gold chart that's that's going to continue going up, and this thing is ultimately going to break out to the top side, and that will probably correspond to like the next major bull market, right? What we have here is not really a major bull market, but um, you know, it, it, it could happen. Uh, let's see, the Federal Reserve balance sheet continues to decrease exactly like we've expected since that whole March saga. Um, I would like to see this flatten out at some point because the more that this continues going down, the more that I I get concerned for the ability of this current miniature bull market to continue. Um, everything else here, I think we talked about this last week, but this is median uh, home prices. And basically they've rebounded in, in the early part of this year, which is exactly what the sawtooth is. It's basically January, <clears throat> January, February, March, where, uh, where housing prices are, are cyclical after the winter season, they, they start bouncing back up. Um, so that's, again, it's like, that's, that's not a sign of a, a systemic problem, right? If, if we were seeing this thing, like continue to stay down here, that would be a sign of sy systemic issues. Um, and there's some other things that I look at too. Um, I'll show you one called Whirl. Uh, this is basically, it's not reverse repos. It's actually, um, repurchase agreements with the fed. And essentially it, it's kind of an emergency lending facility that was established a long time ago. And uh, when it spikes up and it stays up, like that's usually a, a sign of, um, of bad things to come. So in March, we spiked up and that was definitely a, a concerning point, but it came right back down and we've been low ever since. So again, systemic risk seems pretty low to me. Um, one, one interesting thing that we have here on, on yields is that you can see in white, that's the, the Federal Reserve overnight funds rate. Um, you'll notice that like in 2000 and then in 2008, that it got above everything else. And it kind of looks like we were heading there, um, but then as of late, at least the short-term yields have rebounded above the, uh, the federal funds rate here in white. So um, that's an interesting bit of reversal. And then we also have the, the yield curve inversion has started to come to the downside again. Like if this thing is dropping again, this would be an indication that, hey, these markets are not gonna crash, like they've still got more to go. 
uh, especially if we see this thing make even further lows. It's crazy to me that they're, they're like they're pushing this harder and farther, it seems, than they've ever done before. Um, uh, it, it would be good. It would sort of behoove me to try and um, look at some of the big ones that people look at, like the two year versus the 10 year, the 10 year versus the 30 specifically in isolation because this is this pink line is a combination of everything i subtract everything longer from everything shorter and then average it out so that i get like a really uh thirty thousand foot view of what that looks like um but at any rates um yeah all the rates have been coming up and um yeah i mean it, it makes sense because people people would i mean if it was me and it was my money i'd, I'd rather get something like four and a half percent by putting really it's more like 4.7 percent by putting money with the overnight repurchase agreements at the federal reserve and getting like highly liquid cash right because i'm getting basically the same percentage almost the same percentage um as the short-term stuff and of course we've got the default the potential uh not default but the um like the failure to raise the the debt ceiling coming up here i think that's that might be next week is it june 4th if anyone else has knows what that date is when like the federal government will have to shut down or whatever um I'm not convinced that they'll actually solve it because it's it's entering election season, so they might you know grandstand a little bit. But at any rate, um, part of the reason that rates are going up here probably is because people are nervous about hey, is the government going to actually you know meet its obligations, whatever? So they're selling bonds, which drives the rates up because now you have to offer a higher interest rate to get people to convince them to buy it. Um, when you can also just put money with the Federal Reserve overnight repurchase facility and get a guaranteed percentage and then have your money totally liquid. So um, I think that's that sort of dynamic is a big factor in why we're not we're not seeing, or, or sorry, why we're seeing this go up um, and sort of, at least for this part, uh, sort of renormalize just slightly where the federal funds rate is below at least some of the shorter term um, interest rates. Uh, I think we talked about the NASDAQ. Here's the S&P. Uh, basically, it, it kind of finally broke out of this like hard capping resistance that we've had really for most of the year. It, it's it's broken out of it kind of but it's not like convincingly you know really off to the races so uh, i do think that whenever we hit this area right here uh, that that will be a pretty significant resistance there for the s p um and then nasdaq we kind of already looked at it but we got some lines drawn on this chart right here so you can see that uh, this sort of ascending channel it's now broken out to the top side and this was an important uh, area back in august right that was the august top last year so the NASDAQ is, is definitely looking, um, it's looking strong, but I don't necessarily believe this breakout. I think it's probably got a little bit more to go. Maybe it can even make it all the way up here, um, but I don't, I just don't expect that it's going to go to new all-time highs. It's, it's not really what I would think. I would think it will stall out here, kind of come back down, maybe get back into this area. Um, again, I, I do think that if the, the name of the game, I think, for sort of the the controllers, you know, and the, the guys that run the, the financial system is stability. They just, they want to keep things nice and positive and, you know, kind of sideways and then a little bit more positive. They, they want to just keep things as stable as they can. Uh, already looked at gold. Let's, um, we'll look at crypto overall, but now that you got the background for the, the macro, what's going on there, we could just take a look at Monero. So we're still in this like newly formed uh, down channel as, uh, let's go to the daily, that would be better. Okay, so uh, yeah, we, we're still like we kind of broke out of the the final boss um, resistance, and then um, and then we just like dragged another line up here to the top, and that's kind of been relevant. We're just sitting here in this channel, and uh, yeah, that just seems par for the course for how Monero tends to break resistances. Any anything else in crypto, for the most part, you break this kind of stuff, and you know it, it's off to the races. Although I must say that a lot of the altcoins um, lately, as of the past few months they do have kind of like similar things where they'll like break some some down sloping resistance and then sort of kind of like end up still going down so maybe monero is not totally singular in that right now um it's just that it's not you know bitcoin or ethereum one of the big dogs um if we were to look at the z scores we could we could try and convince ourselves on the shorter time frame especially that we're seeing some kind of divergence here um so the green line just ever so slightly sloping up You've got the yellow line. It's definitely kind of sloping up here. It, it, it looks like there's a very real potential that um, we could be forming some kind of divergence. You know, price has been slightly, slightly going down. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I do believe that if if crypto in general ever gets off to the races again, if we if we get moving again here, um, Monero is going to, you know, it'll, the price should go up with everything else. 
it's kind of weird to me to see that Monero earlier this year, March and April, made these levels, and then at this moment that we're we're down by how much is it? I guess seven percent is not that bad. Maybe I'm complaining a little bit too hard there. Um, but at any rate, I mean, like we've got you know, let's go even to the shorter time frame and see if we can't pull out any any signal here. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of see it's downsloping, downsloping, and it, it might it might maybe have started a new uptrend. And we'll have to see. That's that's not entirely convincing, but it, it could be. Um, we've we've made a nice little bottom here with Monero Bitcoin, uh, Monero versus BTC. Um, maybe uh, maybe we don't have to actually you know go down to this oops, go down to this level down here. Um, so that's like the weekly, right? So just the the big broad top level view. Uh, but if we go down to daily, and we'll probably go down to the four hour. I think um, I want to say that I also saw, yeah, we we definitely have some kind of divergence here going on with the Z scores. So again, where we've got this sort of upsloping, uh, upsloping Z scores, where price was kind of making slightly lower lows. So that's good. Um, you know, we we kind of broke out of this like sort of downtrend thing here. I, I'm not really sure how useful that line is for us to look at anymore. Uh, but at any rate, the, the major line that we need to break is this guy right here. So it, that's been acting as sort of this capping resistance. Um, it really doesn't, like you would say from just a pleb line perspective, um, and there's other ways of looking at it as well, but you would you would kind of look at this and say, well, you know, it, it wouldn't necessarily have to break until, say, June or even July. And who knows what could happen by then, right? It, if this whole debt ceiling gets resolved, like uh, I expect that the markets would probably take that pretty good. And probably crypto should respond pretty pretty well. Um, one thing I've seen on the divergences, and again, we really have to take this chart with a grain of salt. This is, um, it just hasn't been that reliable lately, and it used to be very reliable. But we have seen basically all of the exchanges diverge into positive, um, positive prices, pro positive volume weighted prices uh, over cracking. So it does look kind of like they're accumulating. And that would, that would be a bit unsurprising because um, prices have been negative. Right, crypto has been going down just ever so slightly, little by little, for the past two, three, four, five weeks now. Um, so, as we say, they, at least my opinion is, they like to accumulate Monero when things are quiet, people are fearful. It gives them the opportunity to, to to sort of replenish their coffers that they can then use later when things are very positive to sell onto the market um, to keep attention distracted from Monero. Right? You you want to develop this idea like, oh, Monero just doesn't perform well in in bull markets, and it's kind of the same thing that they do to gold. Um, in fact, we've, it's crazy how gold will go up before the rest of the markets. That was a big signal for us in January that gold is already like it was already in an uptrend. Um, and we say, well, that, that often indicates um, like the premonition of positive movement on stocks. And it seems like that tends to happen with Monero as well to, to a significant extent. So um, just things that I say to myself, hmm, you know, it's, it's interesting that the same playbook they used to suppress gold uh, seems to be a similar playbook they used to suppress Monero. So. What does that tell you about some of the people that might be involved in the crypto ecosystem? Uh, but I'm just preaching to the choir, so you know, I'll let I'll let that one be for now. <laughs> we've got the, also Monero Ethereum, and uh, you know we've kind of like uh, we're also forming positive divergence here. Um, it's not exactly positive divergence because um, I guess a little bit because this right here we made a lower low on price uh, where you know we were seeing a little bit of uh, upward momentum already for the Z scores. Um, very light. Uh, this is all like subject to be invalidated. <laughs> like, the moment that crypto starts going on another bull run, if it does, um, I, I, I got to be honest. I have been feeling a little bit more nervous about keeping these crypto positions alive. Um, there is the possibility that you know maybe we have reached some kind of temporary top, and it's the beginning of maybe a one a month's long stagnation, a month's long trip back down to the um, potentially that. Uh, uh, to, to, to regression analysis, right? The, the red line here. I, I do expect we're going to touch this red line, fully touch this red line at some point. It could be next year, right? This thing could just kind of continue doing this, and maybe next year we touch it like at twenty thousand or something. Um, one thing that I need to do, I was, I was looking at this uh, yesterday. I, I realized that I need to actually reach all this yellow line. So the yellow line represents the non-bubble data. If you remove all of these peaks here, and, and there's like a very um, sort of algorithmic way that we do that to make sure that we're not like losing relevant data. But by now, so I only included data from like for this yellow line from before this cutoff point right here. Um, I haven't integrated any of the recent bear market data. And we've got like almost 360 days now of data. So I need to, um, yeah, we got a whole year of data. So I need to sort of recalculate this yellow line. It's, it's going to move down some. 
Um, but I'll maybe I'll show that to you guys next week if I can uh, manage to get to that. So um, crypto, last thing we'll look at here is, is crypto. Uh, we got Bitcoin. Why don't we look at we have Bitcoin Andy? Yeah, we have we had it over here. Yeah, here we go. Yes, yeah, so we got Bitcoin and Ethereum um, together. I like to look at them together now. Overall, we're still kind of like in this big, big broad structure. We're still we're at this moment we're sitting at a pretty important um, support point. The August highs, right? That August top. That's that's really like a crucial pivot area. Um, it seems like you know, hey, we got above you know this lower area right here. We we should be you know off to the races. I guess you know in a lot of ways it makes some kind of sense here because that's where we capped out um, back at this time last year, right? So for May of last year, we capped out at, at this spot. So. I guess it's not too surprising that we touched that and then came back down. Um, but, uh, you know, there's so much to look at that. Yeah. I mean, we, it, it, it was there, it was there to be seen. Um, I guess the, the hopium in the, and also the fact that the stock market still looked good and that, that um, what's it called? Uh, macro still looked good. Had me thinking, all right, well, you know, there's a chance here that we could kind of do one of these things. And, uh, you know, I was really hoping that we would be more in this area at this moment. Um, but that's not to say that we can't just, you know, uh, overcome, right? Uh, by we, I mean everyone here that loves Ethereum so much, right? <laughs> uh, but you know, the crypto sector as a whole, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Um, I mean, I kind of like Ethereum. I'm not going to lie. You know, confession time, I guess. But uh, anyways, like, there's a reasonably <laughs> good chance we could hold this area. What's in that coffee, I mean, it, bro? It's a, it's a truth serum. <laughs> I mean, hey, Ethereum's got the stable coins, and the stable coins helped to save my ass during the, the bear market. So, like, mm, you know, what do you yeah. want? It, it worked for That's me. It's got some utility for sure. I mean, it's it's like the dirty fiat that I sold into back in 2021. Like, it's been useful, right? If I had the opportunity to yeah. spend it. So let's, let's be honest. You know, we're, we're working towards replacing the system, but you know, we, we make the compromises where we have to. Exactly. But uh, you know, this thing right here, it's, it's this could hold. Like, this could hold. We we would hope to see this hold and start going up at some point. That doesn't mean it has to. If this breaks down, um, I really don't like that. I mean, we'll have to try and hope that this lower line here holds, but. Fine. With with Maybe. the kind of the the recent uptake with ordinals on Bitcoin, have we seen the energy kind of get sucked out of the Ethereum ecosystem a little bit and moved into Bitcoin for those purposes, NFTs and all that? No, no. I mean, it, it doesn't look like it. Ethereum, at least from a price perspective, it looks like Ethereum is still like this is strong. Like, this is a good chart, um, especially if we go towards the weekly. I mean, you can just see that this thing bounced up. The, the volatility has been dropping off, kind of like a bit of a sideways triangle here. And um, let's go to the daily. Yeah, I mean, overall, there, there's kind of this, this triangle developing. And Ethereum, as you see on the Z-scores, as we've been talking about for the past couple months, has this positive bullish divergence, like very clear. Um, so we'll have to see. Like, you'd want to see this thing break out of this triangle and then go to the upside. But overall, like, no, I, I don't see I don't see Ethereum having lost a whole lot of uh lost a whole lot of steam relative to Bitcoin. This mm -hmm. was where the um, the great stake unlock of 2023 was supposed to destroy Ethereum and make Bitcoin rise to the penultimate position for all of eternity, but that just didn't happen. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was the time for that to happen. So, but, I mean, honestly, this looks like a chart that could easily break to the upside here at some point. Interesting. All right, man. I don't think Ethereum is that, like, I don't think, sorry, I don't think Bitcoin is that great for tokens anyways. Like, um, I had an idea to recreate a very popular shitcoin on Bitcoin. It, it, it had already been done, actually. It had been done like four times over. Uh, but there's no contract functionality. There. Like you can't do anything. You can't issue tokens or like put um, yield or inflation or locking. None of that stuff. You could just like make a token that says, hey, my name is what? And and then it's like, okay, I guess people buy it because it's named a thing, but it doesn't actually do anything. Like it's right Maybe so it's just kind it of like simple nft token yeah it doesn't it doesn't have the the usability that erc20 tokens have is what you're saying right yeah i mean they've got their nfts they've got their brc20 but it's like there's just no functionality there so yeah. maybe they'll get the roll-ups going at some point um I don't, I don't know yeah it's pretty it's pretty interesting um because it's you know it's also controversial, right? There's a lot of people, I guess, in Bitcoin that don't even want this taking place. But it, <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> I think I think it's good hey, for Bitcoin, to be honest. I respect the guys that are that are um, that don't like it because there's a lot of guys saying, you know, it's like it doesn't matter what happens, everything is good for Bitcoin. Like, 
even if the chain, like even if there's an inflation bug and the chain just crashed and burned, they'd be like, no, but this is good for Bitcoin. Like that's what some people would say. <laughs> so I at least have the respect for the guys that recognize, hey, this is not being digital freedom money. Um, but at the same time, most of those guys, I, I hear them, they're just like upset. They're like, y'all shouldn't be doing this. And that's bad. It's like, well, hey, best money on earth unstoppable tech go fix your tech right like that's right, that's right. the answer there yeah it's, so it's kind of like them being you know upset that chain analysis companies exist like it's not it's not fair these companies are tracing our our blockchain like mm -hmm. right, well, then, you know change it change More up babies. your change up your tech and they won't be able to do that i kind of see it see it as, a, as the same situation if anything yeah you know i think i think it's you know also kind of bullish for monero right because monero further uh defines itself as being true digital cash right so it kind of pivoted yeah. away from or ordinals whereas bitcoin has been unable to do that and it's embraced them it's kind of funny to hear how the long-term security budget uh budget problem that didn't exist is now suddenly solved <laughs> right right <laughs> It wasn't a problem in the first place, but thank God for ordinals because it solved it. Satoshi knew he knew twelve years ago that they were going to need NFTs to solve the security budget. <laughs> all right, man, all good stuff. But um, I mean, this sh like you, I, and I guess you've kind of said this already, but this should be kind of a good time for Monero to slowly creep up, right? As the, when the entire market's down, this is usually when we see Monero creep up a little bit against against Bitcoin. I think at a minimum we're, we're stable. Oh yeah, versus especially versus Bitcoin, there's there's versus the opportunity. Bitcoin. Yeah. I mean, the chart structure kind of keeps us capped right here at the moment, so I'm I'm not really convinced that this. I mean, it could break out, right? I'm not. It, it could break to the upside. I'm not convinced that it will, though. Um, we'll, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. It, it looks to me from from a U.S. dollar perspective, Monero seems to have a pretty reasonable good stability. Um, at least it has for the past couple of weeks. So. Uh, I mean, it's it, it, it's likely just to be more and more boring. You know, um, let me show you guys one more thing. So this is Bitcoin versus the NASDAQ. And um, we had talked last week about like there's like a head and shoulders that kind of happened here. And so if you were to take uh, the target from that head and shoulders, um, which is it's not entirely a straight line, but um, it would be somewhere between here and here. So, oh, wait, no, that's not true. What did I do there? I almost lied to you guys. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, okay, there we go. So the target is, is getting pretty close to being made, like hypothetically. It would be somewhere around this dotted line right here. I don't remember why I drew that dotted line. It's probably important somewhere else. Uh, but at any rate, we're, we're pretty close to that target. So it's we could be looking in the next, say, one to four weeks at a bottoming of Bitcoin versus and, and overall crypto versus the NASDAQ um, versus the stock market. So we could see some kind of like rebound here to the upside. Um, anyways, uh, that's I kind of I say that because I, I when we talk about the Monero versus Bitcoin ratio in my mind now, I just think, OK, when crypto's up, the ratio is flat or down. Um, so, I'm you know, I'm still <clears throat> I'm not selling my positions yet. At least the hodl portion of my positions are, are still in play. Um, but, you know, I, I might be a little bit more putting my finger on the trigger if, in case things start looking bad. Um, but at the same time, if they solve the this, the debt crisis thingy crisis, quote unquote, um, you know, that'll, that'll probably give us some more upward positive action overall. All right. You know where I stand. <laughs> hodl. Just, just Don't hodl be a stupid DJ trader. Hodl, hodl, hodl and use head down and build, right? Um, Indeed, sir. I mean, the ig ignoring ignoring price, I feel like Monero feels stronger than ever in terms of people actually using the community. Uh, feels like it's growing, so... All, all good indications there. I mean, our transaction counts look nice in green here. They've, you know, we we hit almost we hit over thirty thousand during Monerotopia, um, and then we're still like we're still okay. above twenty thousand. If if we have a, do we have like another like two minutes? I wanted to um, talk about the transactions. And yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, wrap it up with that. So, okay, so uh, as you can see at the top left here, this is Litecoin, Doge, Bitcoin Cash, and Monero. And I just want to point something out here about Litecoin. Notice how it's just been stable, stable, stable at a 90 to 100,000 transactions. And then as soon as the ordinals thing hit and the NFTs and the BRC20s, Litecoin magically, everyone just adopted Litecoin. They went from 100,000 to 600,000 transactions. Like Bitcoin doesn't like if you even tried to make the argument that, oh, well, people are leaving Bitcoin for Litecoin because, you know, it's clogged and because of NFTs, which is about three quarters true, but it's not entirely true. Um, but at any rate, like 
Litecoin, did you really actually uh, go up that much, right? And then we've got Dogecoin. Did Dogecoin really go from 20,000 transactions to a million and do a 50X? I, I don't think so. I don't think that Doge just magically got 50 times more adoption. I think the more likely thing is that miners are incentivized to pad the blocks, right? To stuff the blocks with non-real transactions to, to make it look like people are adopting. Um, and wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what Charlie Lee at Coinbase did uh, back in 2017. Coinbase got fined $6 million for this, for the wash trading bots that were created to fake adoption of Litecoin on Coinbase. Um, and and the, the lead dev, that they, they said a developer in the report on, from the CFTC, but a lead, the lead dev, who was Charlie Lee at the time, um, made these wash trading bots to make it look like Litecoin had adoption. So it would be completely in their modus operandi to expect them to pad their blocks. And if we go back further, you can see that they've done this. It seems like they've done this as well. Where everyone else over the bear market was like having dropping transactions, Litecoin was just steady, 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 steady. It's like, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. Right? I just don't buy that. So um, I don't know what's up with Dogecoin and Bcash. I, I don't know what's up with Bcash either. They've got like these weird oscillations, like well, up to hundred thousand back down. All, all these cryptos, including Monero, went up in transaction count at the same time, right? Due to the, the congestion in the Bitcoin network. But you're saying some may have been organic and others not so much. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it would be reasonable to me to think 10, 20, maybe even 50%, maybe even a 2x, right? It could be 2x. But like Bitcoin's doing 250,000 transactions per day. So let's suppose that NFT saturated the chain and there's 250,000 transactions looking for somewhere to go. Okay, we could explain like some part of this, but you can't explain the six hundred, uh, the five hundred thousand, the right. half million transactions extra that Litecoin suddenly put on. And you know, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, right? Because the miners do have the incentive to pad the blocks, um, because if they make it look like there's usage and saturation and fees can go up, right? The miners can collect more fees. Mm -hmm. um, but with Monero, we've got dynamic blocks, so fees actually go down as they if they try to pad the blocks. So it's like there's a natural disincentive on Monero towards doing that. Whereas there's a natural incentive on basically every other proof of work chain towards doing that. And there's a lot of people that suspect that's actually happened with Bitcoin um, to a significant degree over the years. Very cool, man. I like it. All right. Thanks for, Good stuff. Thanks for the time. Yeah, thank you, man. Greatly appreciate it, as always.